on the pivot that you're talking about, like to me, this is the absolutely the most incredible thing that you ever taught me. Yeah. And what is it's, it's different than you know some of the modern day teaching is that it involves three planes of motion as opposed to just one. Yeah. Could you kind of let me explain that just a little bit? Well, you, you see, when you shift this way, that's one plane, right? Now you, you're going this way with this, this leg, like it's coming out in front of that leg. Mm -hmm. Now, I have a bottom part of the spine. The bottom part of the spine is the right leg. But now if you turn this way, where's, your, where's the bottom half of your, your spine? You have no support, right? Mm -hmm. If you have no support, you can't hang a door on anything that will work except the upright. So if you tried to turn your right hip, then you, your initial motion you're was You're putting a yourself turn. in a negative position, and it'll cause you to have to loop the club into a figure eight to get to the ball. But a turn, so, like, so if a person, almost everybody that plays golf, has some kind of rotary motion. Yeah, the rotary motion, though, is not the way that it's being taught. It's, most of the books will tell you to, to turn your right hip back inside of your right angle. Then if you do, you're standing on your left leg. I've never seen a pitcher pitch off his left foot if he's throwing right-handed. No, he steps on the wrong. right and he steps to the left. Now, if you're, you're already here like this, you're on the left, now how can you step? It says the, the longest journey starts with a step. <laughs> the longest journey starts with a step. So I'm stepping over here to the right side and doing an upswing. I'm going to step over to the left side. Now I've got a bottom half of my spine supporting the upper half. Mm -hmm. Now, it's not supporting here. There's two hips supporting it, but it has to be one to rotate that right side. So if you, if you just had a, say, like, if you just had, if you started trying to turn first or turning a rotary motion, your, then head, your head is swaying. Your head will instinctually, and show that even if you kept it on there, it would almost be like you said earlier that someone could just might as well come and cut your right leg off because you don't, it negates all the force if that you're you trying none, to wind you up. None. It's just like a, what you call a building destroyer. It's a big hunk of cement on a pendulum. They pull it back and let it go, and man, it, it's This motion destroyed. right here? Yeah. Like, a, like, a, like the lateral motion. Like these motions, when, you know, the people that look, view the tape, when you lift them out and they, they, they become individual motions as opposed to being blended, they look amplified, don't yeah, they? Yeah. Like if someone was to say, well, boy, that looks like a sway. Yeah. You know, if you move like this and it's not accompanied with something. Yeah. Well, what would you do about consistency if it's doing just the opposite? Turn this thing up here. Now your head is going there in the head there. That's a metronome, and this is a pendulum with your head here. Now move your weight to the right. Mm -hmm. Now now that that leg becomes part of your spine. Yeah, it's just one long deal. It's like I start off on a two-foot balance. Yeah. I shift to a one-foot balance. And then, you, then you just swing your arms back from there. Yeah. Up the oblique plane. That turns your shoulders. Right. And then when I'm coming back down, though, you know, I, all the slack is out between all the joints at this point. Right. Now you have to get over here. Now you're just like you're gonna a pitcher is gonna step over here like this. Now you're coming underhand throw upward. Up. Like so. Yeah. All right.